What does pyrexia mean? So these are two different terms. They both equal fever. So they're going to use this interchangeably in the test. So that's what they both mean. So do you guys know what controls the temperature in our brain? Would it be the blood? Um, no, it's just the hypothalamus. Okay. So that little, you know, that little controlling center. Yeah, I thought you meant like the temperature up here. Oh, no, no, just in the brain. Yeah, so the hypothalamus controls that. And so you have two different mechanisms in keeping temperature. You have heat loss and then heat production. That makes sense, right? Like if you're too hot, the hypothalamus is going to tell your body to lose heat. So it's going to start sweating. If you're too cold, the hypothalamus is going to tell you to start producing more heat. So your metabolism is going to go up and you're just going to start working. So. The hypothalamus is divided into two co compartments, anterior and posterior. Do you guys remember that from Manette and Fizz? Yeah. Um, so the heat loss is controlled by the anterior. So the way I remember that is, you know how they say everyone loses the most heat out of their head? So they like put a toque on because, or a beanie, Canadian yeah. term, because you're going to lose heat from your head. That's why I remember that. The anterior, which is the front, it's kind of, I think of it like the head. So you're going to lose, so anterior heat loss. That's the part of the brain, part of the hypothalamus that controls heat loss. So I can even write this. Oh, and then heat production is just the opposite. So it's posterior, heat production, posterior, heat loss, anterior. So I don't know if they're going to be that specific, but they, th they might, so you'll know it. So what, um, what are some things that cause heat production? What are some things that if your body is cold, what will your body do? Shiver. Shiver, yes, that's correct. Shiver, also exercise gives heat production. You're working harder. Metabolism, so just burning fat, burning food, burning sugar. So what are the things that produce heat? heat production? What are things incorporated with that? Think more things that can cause heat? Or just to recap. Oh, yeah. What are some things that um, oh, produce heat? What you just said. So yeah, just recap. Exercise, yep. um, metabolism, shiver. shiver. Shivering. Yeah. Blood flow. Yeah, exactly. So now heat loss. What are some ways we can lose heat? Do you know, Courtney? So like, not having clothes on. Yep, not having clothes on, sweating. So in nursing, we call that, or just in healthcare. Evaporation, radiation. Oh. Diaphoresis is sweating. Oh, okay. So they're going to use that word. So, know that word. <laughs> Diaphoresis, which is sweating. So yes, so there's radiation. Um, here, I'll just list them down here. Heat loss, radiation, conduction, convection, evaporation, and then diaphoresis. So these are the, some of the ways our body will lose heat. And I don't think you really need to go deep into those, but just know those are some, some ways. And so like if you have a, if you have a sunburn, um, People tend to put like lotion on it, which is actually not won't help your sunburn heal at all because the lotion is trapping your skin and so the heat will never come out and it just makes it worse. And that's why they made aloe vera, which is cool and it lets the heat come out. And that's why it feels good. So don't put more sunscreen on if you burn. Lotion. Wasn't it kind of lotion-y? Yeah, but it'd probably help you stop from burning too. Just kind of like pick your, pick your battle. <laughs> So yeah, just aloe vera is better than lotion because it doesn't trap it in as much. And so, okay. Can I erase this? Mm -hmm. So do you guys know the values for pyrexia, which is what? Fever. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I mean, 
is 100 point four? That's the, between the normals. But, so there's two values. So you want to intervene. So like different medications like tol Tylenol is an antifibrial. So you want to intervene at 102. In the hospital, you want to intervene at 102. Start doing intervention to help that go down. But your fever is dangerous at 104. That's when it's severe. Oh, there goes the lid. OK, so with the fever, what we kind of just talked about, it's kind of obvious. You have increased heat production and decreased heat loss. Um, do you guys know some causes of some fevers? Um, babies going on when they're teething. Yeah. So yeah, so one of the main causes too is like infection. So that's when you have pyrogens like bac bacteria or viruses. They act like antigens and they just cause your immune system to flare up. And when you see someone get a fever, that's almost like a good thing because it means their body is fighting the infection, which is a healthy response. And so you have an increased white blood cell count. So some ways that we know a patient has an infection, we take their vital signs and they have a fever. So then we go and look at their um, blood draw and if their white blood cell count is raised too, they also have an infection. So just remember that fever often indicates infection due to the bacteria or viruses in the body. Um, so there's different phases to a fever. So there's the chill phase. It's when the high set point reaches the top. Um, so you just reach the top of your fever. And then you have the plateau phase is when the chill phase subsides and they are warm and the, the pyrogens are destructed and the body's like recuperating. So the plateau is the decline and they're getting better. So there's two also, so there's so many terms for a fever. So there's pyrexia. What was the other one we said? Febrile. Febrile, yeah. So there's febrile. So there's two variations of this too. Febrile is um, the heat loss response to a fever. So that's how your body's working to get rid of it. But then, do you guys know what it means when there's an A in front of a word in like Latin, I think it is? Without? Yes. So, afibrial is when the fever breaks. So you start sweating. And so. So, that would probably be like shivering for febrile and then sweating at A. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that, yeah. That's like when you're in the um, afibrial. Don't put lotion on them because the heat is getting trapped and they're trying to lose it. Okay. So, there's also two variations that I'm uh, not really, have a f I guess I have a fever. Um, heat stroke. You got, have you guys had that before? Just from being in the sun too much and you just get a little sick? Nauseous. Yeah. So that's just our body it has a decreased ability to lose heat, which makes sense because you're boiling hot. And then there's also heat exhaustion. Do you guys know what that is? Isn't it the same? Um, close, yeah, it's just like increased sweating. So what's the other word for sweating? Diaphoresis. Perfect, yeah. So now, I'm gonna erase this. We'll keep that up there though. Um, so now let's list the values for hypothermia. So what's hypothermia? Too cold. Yeah, it's the opposite because it says hypo, right? Okay. So, there's different variations. So there's mild hypothermia. And then there is moderate and severe, which is, you're almost dying. Okay. So mild is when it's not, like the worst kind, it's not that bad, it's 93.2 to 96.8 which is still pretty alarming. And then it just goes down from there. And then severe is when it's less than 86. And so it's like life alarming situation. And so I have in my notes, the number one intervention is when they're hypothermic is to take off the blankets. And I'm not exactly sure why, you guys are gonna hate me, but I'm not exactly sure why. But I just know 
I need to take off the blankets. So, and they might have a question on that. The blankets. Um, yeah, maybe. Isn't yeah. it like when you're wet and stuff, you're supposed to take off your clothes? Because isn't it like holding the cold in? Yeah, or that's like you know, and like have you guys seen like the day after tomorrow? He gets hypothermia, so they both just take off their clothes and use body heat. Yeah. So yeah. But I think also like in the hospital when the patient's like, I'm just so cold, I can't get warm, and their temperature's low, you need to take off the blankets. And that's usually the issue. And I remember her telling us that like multiple times, but I don't, yeah, I don't remember her ever giving an explanation, a rationale for it. Because usually the blankets warm you up. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, I think it helps with like the heat flow and something like that. But if you want to Google it, maybe I'll, I've tried to Google it. I don't know, but I know she said that. So. Maybe your body just starts to heat itself up. Yeah, it's maybe, it, that. yeah, that could be it too. I'm sorry, I don't know the rationale. So, um, there's like two spots in your body that are most accurate to for your temperature. So there's two, and like it doesn't really matter though because they all they're pretty close. But the first one is the temporal artery, and in the hospital, it's like this like stick thing with a little probe at the end and what you do is you just like place it on their head it's like this and you go do do and then it measures it so that's a temporal artery and that's a good way to measure temperature also your bladder is a really good way but you don't really go in there to measure for vitals they can have one with temperature in it, yeah but I've never seen that so I've always done most of the time I do temporal artery just cuz and like oral I think is not very accurate cuz if they just eaten and they didn't tell you or something. Yeah, and our, our thermometers are super cheap. And like, yeah. I got a 94.4 today. Oh, mine, mine never work. Yeah. They're, but in the hospital, they work. So that's what really matters. So um, dehydration, this is kind of like a tangent. But dehydration, you have increased body temperature. And you also have, um, so I'll write this. I just know you need to know it. You have, so RR stands for respirations, just so you guys know. Oh wait, sorry. Yeah. You have increased respirations, increased temperature. So if there's a test about dehydration, start thinking like, oh, they probably have an increased temperature. Okay. What's the physiology behind that? Do you know? Um, I just know like their body's working harder because when you're dehydrated, you have less blood volume. And so, like your um, blood pressure is also going to be really high and same with your pulse or not your blood pressure sorry your pulse so HR heart rate just so you guys know and your pulse is going to be low because or sorry your blood pressure is going to be low because you have less blood volume because you have less fluid in you so your heart has to work so hard to pump that blood throughout your extremities and that's why your heart rate is fast but you have low blood pressure because you have low blood volume and so you're just working harder so like the metabolism thing you're kind of Working harder, so your temperature's higher, and again, you have increased breathing because you're like, gotta work harder. So that's more extreme dehydration. Like I'm probably dehydrated right now, but I think I'm fine. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>